how do you remove people from your life without throwing them away? Welcome to another episode of Becoming with Angelina Watkins. I'm your host, Angelina, your queen of becoming, and I am here to help you achieve emotional, spiritual, and financial prosperity. I started this podcast so I can help my sophisticated professionals and my first-time entrepreneurs become who they need to be so they can be able to do what they need to do so they can win at love, life, and money. So in this episode, we're going to talk about boundaries, specifically how do you remove people from your life without throwing them away? But before we get into that, I want to make sure that we do some housekeeping, okay? Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss another episode. We are here every Thursday dropping that knowledge of what you need to know so you can become who you need to be, so you can create that life that you want to live. All right. And if this is your first time joining us, I do thank you for joining us. Welcome in welcome to the show so let's go ahead and get right into this okay how do you remove people from your life without throwing them away that's a question that came to me from several people in one week so i said let me go ahead and make a podcast episode about it because if they're asking then surely some of you out there are probably wanting to know the same thing because we have um people in our lives that we might um label as toxic uh, we might label them as emotionally unhealthy. Um, they're just difficult people, hard to get along with, and they're causing us some mental and emotional anguish, okay? They're causing distractions in our life. They're causing us and they're slowing us down from being able to get where we want to be and do the things that we need to do and accomplish what we want to accomplish in life. And so there's this thing about throwing people away or cutting them off. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit, cutting people off. But, you know, we don't always want to throw people away because we have to recognize that we all at some point have more than likely been emotionally unhealthy. We've had some things from our past, some trauma, some bad events, some life interruptions that has caused us some pain. And then we act in ways that are that are not that are contrary to our personality and who we are. And we ourselves at some point in time have been the difficult person, the villain in somebody else's life. Um, but you went through a process of healing um, and they need to go through a process of healing, but no one threw you away. So you don't want to necessarily throw other people away. Um, so how do you remove them from your life without throwing them away? And the easy answer is this, you're going to have to set boundaries. And boundaries looks like you limiting access to you on a regular basis. You know, it looks like you not answering the phone every time they call. It looks like you not responding right away to every text. Um, when you get a text message or an email, it looks like you only having conversations or um, interacting with them maybe at family events. It looks like you're not spending as much time with them as you used to. So if you have someone in your life that is um, someone that you need to distance yourself away from, they're not necessarily a bad person because we have people in our lives we love. But they can be some Debbie Downers. They can be negative. They can be non-supportive. And it's not that they don't love you. It's just that they can't even see how to support you. They don't even understand how to love you because their pain uh, and their emotional anguish that, they, that they're that holding on to that's driving their decisions and their behaviors is more prevalent than doing the right thing by you and being supportive. Um, if they're not being supported, it's hard for them to support you. And so if you if you go to them, they're not gonna don't have any encouraging words. In other words, the only thing they can tell you to do is just don't do it. What if this happens? What if that happens? They have a lot of negativity. And you know that deep down inside, they're really not a bad person. So you don't want to throw them away. But you can't continue to let their negativity infiltrate your your mind and your heart and your time in being able to 
again, build the life that you want to live. And so you have to limit the access. And that just may look like you not hanging out with them all the time. You know, if, if your bestie happens to be that person, that Debbie Downer, that negative person, um, you might, instead of hanging out with them every weekend, you might hang out with them maybe one, one week in a month right? You know, if it's a family member, maybe I'm only talking to you at family dinners. I'm not really um, hanging out with you and doing too much with you in between time. So you just got to limit your access, uh, limit their access to you. That's the easy, simple answer. Now, if we talk a little bit further, the question becomes, who is this person? Um, because it's easy to say limit access, but who is this person that you have to limit access to? Because it very may, it may very well be someone that you live with. It may be a parent. Um, it may be um, your your spouse. It may be a sibling. It may even be your children. And and again, those people you don't want to throw them away. They're your family. You don't want to throw your family away. And so, what can you do to set boundaries with someone? that you um, are close to proximity with that you can't get away from. It's easy to maybe get away from someone you don't live with because if you're getting on my nerves, then I'm just gonna leave and go home and shut the door and mind my business. But if we're in the same house, it's kind of hard to just shut the door, um, especially if they're walking right behind you in an argument and you're going in one room and they follow you to that room and into another room, what do you do? And so you've got to get to a point where you and I think I've said this before in a podcast where you're not taking the bait. You got to recognize the negative energy that's coming your way and make that conscious decision to cut it off. Cut off the conversation, be able to um, change the, the tone of the conversation, be able to change the topic of conversation, um, be able to turn it around in a positive note, maybe be able to just stop the conversation and walk away. But not walk away without saying anything because then that becomes rude and dismissive. But being able to say, you know, right now is not a good time to talk. Um, I, I need a little bit of time because I'm not feeling um, comfortable or I'm not feeling right or I'm feeling a little frustrated. I want to be able to get myself together. And then maybe then we can come back and, and finish the conversation. So it's okay to not have that conversation right then and there if it's um, causing you some frustration and some stress, if you find yourself getting to levels um, where it's going to turn into an argument, we got to be able to recognize those things, turn it down, let them know that you need time, let them know you need a moment. Um, can we come back to this another time? So that's one way you can do that with someone that you love is to just start limiting those conversations when you see them getting heated. Now, you're not going to be able to avoid every conversation because some conversations need to be had. Even if you walk away, it does not mean that you don't come back. Okay, you have to be able to resolve conflict. But what you sometimes have to do is find a different approach and a lot and, and walking away and having the conversation at a later time allows you to get yourself together and maybe come with a different approach. Maybe come with some analogies because maybe they're just not understanding you. And you can think of some other analogies that maybe maybe will help them get a different perspective of what you're trying to get them to see. Okay? So we don't want to always throw people away. Because the only way that people can heal is for us to love on them. For us to be patient with them. For us to show them grace and mercy just like someone showed me grace and mercy in my healing, I have to be able to extend that same grace and mercy to the next person. But their healing cannot happen if we don't allow a safe place for them to heal, which is why we can't just always throw people away. But then there comes a time where we've got to make that decision of, do I need to just totally cut them off or do I need to set a boundary? Because there's a difference between cutting someone off and setting a boundary. You know, you can cut someone off and you're just done. Believe me, I was the queen of cutting people off because I'm done, I ain't got nothing else to say, it ain't no working this out, there's nothing else to do, like it's over, I don't ever have to speak to you again, 
Um, I've lost my memory of even who you are, what your name is. Okay. And so you, we've just cut them off. And then I've, I've found in my journey of healing, looking back on some things that a lot of times when I cut people off, it was because I wasn't healed. It was out of my emotions. My emotions was driving and my feelings were driving my behavior and my thoughts to where I wasn't allowing, allowing myself to see another way to see with us in another person's perspective. I'm not even hearing them. I'm not even allowing them to um, share with me where they are and, and mend the fences and resolve the conflict. And so when I look back on that, there's probably, there's, there's some relationships that probably could have been severed and, um, and nurtured and grown if I had just not gotten in my own way, got in my feelings and cut somebody off. And so what we want to do is make sure that um, when we are making the decision of setting boundaries or cutting someone off, that we're doing it from a place of wholeness, that we're not doing it out of our feelings and our emotions. We don't want our emotions to drive our thoughts and our behaviors, okay? Because sometimes we make the wrong decisions in haste out of disappointment, frustration, anger, um, feelings of feeling unappreciated or unloved or unsupported. And we let those emotions of what we're feeling drive us to make the wrong decisions. And we remove the wrong people out of our lives. And so we have to be able to make sure that we can stop and say, is this the right thing to do? Um, is this just a point in my life where I just maybe need to set some boundaries, limit some access, get myself together, come and maybe come back again later? Um, not totally cut them off because I need work just like they need work. Um, and just being able to show people that, again, grace and mercy that was shown to you. So bottom line, we don't want our emotions driving our decisions because our emotions are tricky. They're fickle and they'll have you making the wrong decisions at the wrong time that have a long lasting effect that you don't want to have because Everybody doesn't need to be thrown away. Now, there are some people who need to be thrown away. And you got to be able to sit and analyze and make that decision of who do I keep around with boundaries versus what bridges need to be burned and never crossed again. Okay. And that's when you get to looking at, you have to look at character. You have to look at personality traits. You have to look at their past experiences, what they're going through. You know, you have to look at their efforts. Um, how long are we going to wait for someone to do the things that they need to do to heal? You know, talk is cheap. I want to see some actions. Are we going to therapy? Are we getting some counseling? Are we going to church? Are we um, got a mentor that can help us? Or are we just keep saying and making it look good long enough to keep you around that I'm doing something, I'm working on it, don't throw me away. I love you because that's the stories that we hear. I just want to be with you and I love you. Please don't throw me away. I'm trying, I'm trying. But the tr well, how long are we going to try? Try to do what? I need you to make that phone call and go see that therapist every week. I need you to get up on Sunday mornings and go to church and soak in the word that is being delivered. I'm going to need you to get up and meet with this mentor every other week or every week or however long for them to be able to pour into you and help you transform and become the person that you need to be. But if we're not doing that, how long do you expect a person to have to put up with your toxicity? Okay. So it, it goes both ways. You know, we need to have grace and mercy, but for the person who's toxic, for the person who's causing the other person mental and emotional anguish, it's time for you to do what you're supposed to do to become the person that you need to be to make the relationship work, okay? Now, where you are is not where you have to be. Your past does not define you. You define you. So heal, transform, and pursue you.